and we're live. Hello, hello. The healthiest of elks. Man, you know how those elksy, healthy. What's up, beautiful people? Magenta elks. <laughs> Hello, everyone. It is unwise to trust magenta flavored elks. <laughs> mm. Don't do it, man. It tastes like slightly off strawberries. What? Right? <laughs> yes. Okay. Or raspberries. <laughs> Razzleberry. <laughs> Razzleberry <Wee>. pie. Oh. <laughs> there we go. Hey, maybe you're at home. You're like, what's going on? Why am I at home? Because you're working. Because work's like, don't come into work. You're like, okay, that's fine. But let's be real. You're playing video games right now. <laughs> that's what's up. <laughs> that's what I did. Yeah. <laughs> even while I was doing work there was a video game running on this computer because mm. I had my work yeah. laptop right here <laughs> see pro strats <laughs> don't play it's the like, games oh, the it's work time computer. for a meeting unplug the uh, headset plug mm -hmm. in the uh... <laughs> hello Steve I found husband. the microphone hello, that came with this headset okay <laughs> Plug in the microphone to the headset, plug in the, the headset to the work laptops, like, hello, <laughs> yes, I'm doing work, how about you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Hope everybody's okay. I'm doing fine. In one piece, you've discovered that a toilet uh -huh. paper shortage is not the end of days. <laughs> As... <laughs> The media's <laughs> bored, man. Media's like, yeah, this is all we got to talk about. Ooh, booga booga booga, be scared. <laughs> I Which mean, I, know, I you know. think at this point, all the hoarders already have as much paper as they can possibly hoard. They yeah. do, and it's not even the hoarders. I mean, it's the uh, reaction, the group mentality of like, well, I don't know. Everyone else is doing it, so I thought that was uh -huh. cheap mentality. Yeah. Right. It's um, that humans cheap, are yeah. that. <laughs> that unfortunately happens, <laughs> but. To that. You know, I'm you assuming a lot of you are used to, um, like, uh, very used to being at home. You're like, hey, man, this is, I, I, I can do this. What, I, I don't have to go out for a few days? Done. Not a problem. <laughs> uh, uh, doom bag, correct. And welcome. <laughs> oh, the huge manatees. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Good one, Pedro. <laughs> Humanity was a mistake. I don't know, man. I, I don't question the will of the flying spaghetti monster and his noodly yeah. appendage. <laughs> yeah, no, Nori did ask me to buy a bunch of, like, canned stuff and whatnot, and we, we have a few. It's all still in the cans. Mm -hmm. But uh, <laughs> yeah, we do have a few. It would have been some slapdash quality show. if it wasn't, right? <laughs> or a whole different problem. You're like, why is this cat empty? Nori's like, I haven't touched anything. <laughs> it's not yeah. too bad. I was looking around. I mean, I, like perishable stuff. I don't really keep much on hand. I got a bunch of dry it, beans. It's in mostly this time. meat. <laughs> Can meat. <laughs> Not can me. Come on, man. Look Actual meat. Th those are the perishables that we keep around. See, now if and you'd had canned meat, you'd been in better shape. <laughs> and I just remembered the last time we had a run on the market. <laughs> I2K and that whole stupid thing. <laughs> I was just like, come on. <laughs> remember my mom freaking out and me and my brother are like, Mother, calm down. We've checked the computers. <laughs> they don't have a problem going to the next date. <laughs> <You know? laughs> And she was, oh, she was all into that, man. Oh, To God. be fair, uh, have... in the news during the whole Y2K hype, it was, a, planes yeah. will be falling from the skies. Oh, it's yeah. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. 
Maybe, maybe if it really does get all Mad Max, uh, I'll be sitting back with my canned meat collection. Be like, all right. Mm. Yeah, I will be right back. And uh, you got five minutes, thirteen seconds, yes. twelve seconds, eleven <laughs> seconds, ten seconds, nine <laughs> seconds, eight seconds, six. Yeah, that's going to be an interesting roll around. I'm not going to lie about that. Because <laughs> there, there, there are a lot of systems that people are going to be like, wait, that was still in production? 32-bit <laughs> int. As it turns out, it can only store so much. <laughs> Man. Things are going to be interesting. Yeah. Oh, that's the um, um, bog roll aisle at Tesco's. <laughs> it's like that side of the aisle, completely empty. Everything else, full shelves. <laughs> there's, there's too much other stuff. To, but now, if I'd walked in and um, it, either of the groceries I stopped in Saturday, like this was not Apocalyptica, man. No one was playing <laughs> no. Inter Sandman on a cello. So I was like, hey, it's good. There's plenty of other stuff. I think one of the things I learned is have more than two days of worth of groceries at home. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I figured that out, like, when I was 20. So... <laughs> Especially when money's short, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But if you are at home and you've been working at home all week, and we'll go ahead and throw those out here. A little pro tip for somebody who's been working at home for seven, eight years. Um, Wednesday, Wednesday, get out of the house. Get out of the house. I don't care if you walk outside and walk around your house, your apartment, whatever. If that's all you do, you need that mental reset, man. You do. Yeah, You'll feel better when you come back You in. do need to get away from things. <laughs> It's usually when you come home that you get away from stuff, but you're working from home, so you gotta get away from things somehow. Now take a walk, get some petrol. I'd say go into a coffee shop and grab a coffee, but yeah, maybe not. Maybe not. <laughs> not right now. <laughs> I do it begrudgingly, man. It's like, uh... Because I, nothing, I loathe more than inefficiency. Mm -hmm. So I do my best to have something to do on Wednesdays. Like, I need to go get a thing. Yes. Ha. Just fun. Because <laughs> you'll never see an angrier, grumpier version of me just driving pointlessly. I'm like, this, this is bullshit, man. I do like to drive pointlessly. I... That was one of the things I like to do. It's like, ooh, it's 4 a.m. There's no one on the road. Yeah. Right. I will. It's not even pointless driving. I guess maybe it is. Like if I get a new um, set of tires for like turbo jet, I'll drive up to the mountains for a day and just play around. Or if I'm get about to get a new set, I'll go find an empty industrial place and um, go in circles inappropriately. Yep. <laughs> uh, Steve husband's building a model as we speak. <laughs> oh, that's what you were doing. You didn't go to the bathroom. You were checking in on him. No, <laughs> no both. Steve, <laughs> come on, man. How dare you? Steve can't build models in the loo? <laughs> well, he has models in his loo. And then one of the loos. <laughs> I think the only engineering I've ever done in a washroom is uh, hard drive. Oh. <laughs> it's a good place to make a steam room if you need to get all the dust out of the air. Before cracking <laughs> open a mechanical hard drive. Pro tip. All right. Uh, let me go grab some drinks and we'll get to it. Yes. Okay. Hey, there's a TV shot. <laughs> Missed a, a few of those during the uh, the time of scale. Yes. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, no. The TV shot is back. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, you did, Boo Love. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, he it brings did, a whole so new meaning to worshiping the throne. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, Pedro. <laughs> See Steve, husband? And, no, we actually, it was great because we had that. So the contractors could look at, they were so impressed. They're like, you built your own, you know, <laughs> so they didn't have to guess when they were remodeling it. <laughs> I had 10 minutes to spare, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and my dad teased him because he just drew, I, I think originally he drew a toilet on, and then Steven went back and built the toilet, you know, in a few minutes. <laughs> Put it in there. <laughs> Paper toilet, cardboard toilet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, then you start to get into those people that do like um, molecular level scale stuff and you'd need like an electron microscope to even be able to see what it is it's like oh it's a bunch of atoms that are shaped like some cathedral it's like I commend you on your patience <laughs> but why though <laughs> <laughs> Hard boy board. I think he meant toilet for the win. <laughs> He's on his phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Katana, that's funny. He said the scale was smaller than the scale model. <laughs> Oh god, yeah, Katana. I'm so sorry, you know, with the situation with your kids not being in school and that's hard. <laughs> <laughs> right, kids, we're going to California. Why? That he wants to go see a Linux convention. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, um, I'm glad that um, Need for yeah. Speed World works on Linux now, because that's all I've been playing lately. <laughs> oh, yeah, it, that was really fun to watch, Pedro. Well, I like racing games anyways, and Steven enjoyed it too. His first official day off. <laughs> <laughs> the irony is yesterday, um, you know, he had brought wor work from... He had brought home work to work on, and he was building a model at home. And then that's when the, they called him in the afternoon, just after your show, and said, well, I guess you're not coming in. <laughs> so he was actually doing work while he was at home, but today's his first like day with not having to do work for work. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, the uh, race world that uh, Need for Speed World uh, takes place in is a mashup of the Need for Speed Most Wanted and Need for Speed Carbon Cities. And basically oh, the same cars okay. because they both use the same engines. Uh, so they just imported the models from those two games, gave them a, a bit of a shine, and it's like, there, done, go. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I remember playing that years ago, but I haven't I haven't played it recently since you can play it on Lutris. Ah. All right. Um... We're looking good. People. And as Ven mentioned uh, in what? the stream yesterday, it's Prove like, it. oh, um, hmm? I don't l listen, man. Prove it is my reflex reaction when somebody <laughs> accuses me of something. <laughs> No, uh, even uh, <laughs> Glorious Egg Roll is like, oh, those are neat patches, gimme. <laughs> <laughs> and, and there's the our model of our master bath. <laughs> That's very good, Steve. That's very good. <laughs> <sighs> That's what boredom looks like, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> but what's neat is we have River Rock um, on the floor, and we have uh, Granite and volcanic rock in in the shower it's a my dad built it all custom and um yeah i like that it's a nice big shower so and i have a i have a seat in there <laughs> okay <laughs> now, <laughs> oh, save that. 
that. I gotta get some things. Uh -huh. <laughs> what? I don't know. Jill is trying very hard not to laugh, but failing miserably. Oh, dude. <laughs> I slammed that mute button a minute ago, so... Well, if, if, if you, you guys do live in California. The, the, no bidets anywhere. <laughs> yeah, it's actually become a thing now. Uh, in the last couple of years, people are starting to put them in. It's weird. It's, I, I go into ba people's bathrooms. What's that? Oh, yeah, it's a bidet. <laughs> <It's been> a... <laughs> Why does that toilet not have a tank? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And why is the drain so small? <laughs> What's happening here? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I remember as a kid being okay, very puzzled we're by them. Ready to do this. <laughs> Hate to distract from the conversation, but Okay. Oh come on, it's the bidet discussion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I mean both of you are welcome to come over here and finish hanging the rest of the stuff in the studio <laughs> if it <laughs> takes some extra time. <laughs> <laughs> I have the time, I just didn't have the money to fly out there. <laughs> okay, let's get that recording started, and... Boop! There we go. Reshells. Yeah. The days are, uh... Was it Togo? Toyo? I, I don't hate bidets, but, um... I spent a month with them in Japan, and mm. yeah, mm -hmm. I can deal with them. To be fair, it's that bit of uh, furniture in the toilet that usually holds the towels and the clothes and everything else, because it's like, oh, I can put things on there, because it only gets used every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, let's do this. Yeah. <clears throat> Stretches. Let's get in our pre-slouched positions. <laughs> hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesday, where we can sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about all the fun things we found going on in Penguin Land. I am Vince Stone, <laughs> stuck at home, like always on Wednesdays, somebody's going to be here to run this nightmare, and Jill Bright <laughs> in LA, keeping everything happy there, and the man on the <laughs> island. It's afternoon, evening for him, Juan Pedro Mateus. Hey man together with you watching live man we're gonna jump right into it we got a lot of stuff to do we got a big show and yes. we get a little interview from scale mm -hmm. Yay. that's gonna be good interesting <laughs> and uh man i've been busy i was talking about it earlier i'm like doing arts and crafts and studio like hanging stuff putting stuff on walls mm -hmm. ordering tables and yeah i'm looking forward to it man I, i'm really excited yay no no really. <laughs> work a lot of work <laughs> adulting stuff it's stuff that needs to get done it's either that or i'm going to have to like use another room in the house and this is going to start spilling out and i don't want that cascade i'm like well you know i could just put another thing in this other room like let's just do this one this way that's going to be a thing man um Got a couple of things coming up, though. We're going to be doing a, um, if you're interested in, like, you've got MIDI keyboards and stuff like that, you want to come into Linux, I'm going to show you how to do it. But we're going to take the eBay MIDI challenge on how low can you go on something, because I don't even know it's going to work. It's going to be a fun little video, because it's like, you know what, for five bucks, let's just see what happens. Stay tuned for that, because uh, after I get done with that, I'm working on a sub $100 podcasting kit for everyone. Nice. If you're interested in getting into streaming or, you know, doing what we do, but for a hundred bucks, it's going to be something that I would personally use, which is a big difference than what I see recommended on YouTube. Cause I, I got curious and I was looking on you I'm like, Oh, the no, 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 that's horrible. <laughs> In fact, I can see it from across the studio right now. I got a microphone that I dare say is 98% of this one. And I will say it's got better off access rejection. And it genuinely cost one third the price. Mm. All right. Yeah. Very right? good. This is, this is what happens when you have audio people, not YouTubers, recommending hardware. So stay tuned yes. for that. What else do we? Oh, yeah. And what the S is, Netjack. We're going to do a studio yeah. tour and explanation of uh, 
why that's a thing and how we use it. And uh, I'm probably going to do some ADAT stuff at some point because I wired that up to see if it would work. I know you're like, I don't care about the audio. Dude, I'm connecting devices with lasers. So tune in just for that. So you just need the sharks now is what I'm hearing. <laughs> what do you mean need? <laughs> okay, more duct tape. Gotcha. Right. <laughs> Joe, what's new with you, man? Oh, boy. So I had a great time on Linux Unplugged yesterday at Jupiter Broadcasting talking about scale with uh, Chris Fisher. Is that why you and randomly then... posted a link in Discord? Because it's like, you, yeah. I was like you, you might want to work on throwing some context into that. Yeah. You, well, usually it, the show had already started, so I didn't have time to, to <laughs> be typing because I was on the air. <laughs> so I threw it in. Um, but usually, you know, I, I, I say I'm, I'm on right now. And I also was on um, Saturday um, on Big Daddy Linux uh, European Edition talking about scale. So that was awesome, too. And I just wanted to make a comment, you know, since, <laughs> since I've came back, come back from the Southern California Linux Expo and it ended, it, it's, it's been amazing how much things have changed every day in our world. <laughs> and it's really depressing. But but stay positive and um, our Linux community because our, our penguins are still marching on. There's still some Linux, Linuxy goodness out there. You're feeling down. You're feeling <laughs> a little bad. I want you to think about this. You're at home. You're chilling out. And you're like, I'm stuck at the house. Okay. Imagine if this was 15 or even 10 years ago and you barely yeah. had broadband and YouTube wasn't a thing. <laughs> and it could be a lot. Hey, that's, Netflix. Yeah. that's back when people finished video games you were waiting on yeah. your netflix dvd to show up and you're like oh no what will i do i can only rewatch this cowboy bebop like two more times max yeah so go out play some games on linux and um listen to lots of really wonderful linux podcasts and <laughs> including ours pedro what's new with you man? well uh i suppose uh i too have been working from home because I guess people actually got scared at one point, uh, as far as the higher ups in the NHS go. It's like, all right, uh, we just need to basically maintain a um, core presence on site. So as long as that's maintained, um, the rest of uh, everyone else can work from home. It's like, how about you just say the building's closed, everyone works from home? I'd be very happy with that. Yeah. <laughs> very happy yes. with that. <laughs> No doubt, man. Um, the introvert in me loves this particular yeah. um, event. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Nothing wrong with that, man. Okay, uh, yeah. let's jump right into it with a little bit of AMD news. Because, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, this comes from Tech mm -hmm. Radar. All this is going to be in our show notes. But AMD looks to court Linux gamers by making its GPU driver even better, man. Uh, lead Linux kernel developer needed to maintain open source graphics driver. And uh, they kind of go on a thing about how this is going to be great for gaming somehow. To which, you know, that th 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 genuinely confused me just a little bit. Simply well, because but... they're saying, hey, we're going to hire a person. We're looking for a person, singular, as in one. And like, well, this is going to definitely flow over to um, the gaming side, to which uh, I think, Pedro, you'll back me up on this. Uh, I don't think the uh, person who wrote this article had heard that AMD is going to be focusing on cDNA for their compute. They're mm -hmm. splitting yeah. their product stack yeah. to where they're not <laughs> going to be trying to shove everything into one card, which is good because that's what yes. NVIDIA does with their Tesla series. So. You're not trying to get mm -hmm. all the, you know, you might have more room for shaders or something like that versus, you know, CU yeah. or anything like that. But yeah, man, uh, I don't know if that's uh, really going to trickle down to RDNA, right? I mean, mm. it may because the graphics stack on Linux is Mesa. So mm -hmm. that's probably uh, if one improves, chances are, or I'm hoping that the end users will see some driver performance improvements on AMD side and we need them uh, as someone who has uh, an RX 570 and seeing the 1650 that's on the Steam box uh, handily curbing it in a couple of games not all uh, some of them the RX 570 is still better but yeah no that's uh, as a noticeable difference from the Windows mm. world so I do hope that some of that uh, driver improvement does translate into um, 
the gaming side, but n no, it's like, and they mentioned it's like, oh, the job description. Uh, mm -hmm. Work as part of the global software engineering team to design and maintain Linux open source graphics stack and other software components. Resolve problems related to GPU device drivers, including troubleshooting. Be, 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 be. Uh, specify, design, and implement software features in Linux open source driver stack for AMD GPU and the APU products. It's like, yes, that comes right on the heels of AMD going, oh yeah, CDNA, we're doing that. And as we know, OpenCL on uh, AMD cards is very, very good. That's mm -hmm. what all the miners were using them for. So yeah. improving that on Linux, now that they're focusing on compute, kind of uh, an mm -hmm. essential thing right now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, definitely need to improve those rendering times as well. And I'm keeping my fingers crossed and hoping this, this leads to more development on the direct rendering infrastructure or... DRI 4 because DRI 3 is six years old and that really helps with um, accelerating um, game performance under the Mesa drivers. So this would be awesome. <laughs> Regardless, it's going to be good things for <laughs> Linux and um, yes. you know, AMD could definitely uh, use some help um, well, with yes. some improvements <laughs> and um, especially with like that time gap we see with you know, the, the old adage of if, if you buy an AMD card, it will legitimately be faster next year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yes. there is some, some truth yeah. to that. But uh, we have a couple of other things like uh, OnlyOffice, which uh, yeah. it's got a new a version. Lot of, yeah, a lot of you out there may have not heard of this one. So this is OnlyOffice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Pedro hadn't. Editors uh, version 5.5 is now available, and this is a great Microsoft Office alternative, which includes the ability to compare documents, a scale to fit option to make your spreadsheet fit, a printed page, which is always great, and Ooh, an easy to use, <laughs> easy to use <laughs> presentation editor. And it's just, it's nice to have another great software, um, a great software office solution in this space and focused on online collaboration uh, via their own only office servers or own cloud and next cloud. So you have another option to Microsoft Office and Google Docs. <laughs> and what's really cool is it even supports old unsupported Linux distros, including Ubuntu 12.04. And um, that was really cool. And I installed the Deb, but there is an app image, Snap, Flatpak, and even a tar.gz. Mm -hmm. and, um, and the RPMs. Don't forget the, the RPMs. R oh, yeah. The <laughs> RPMs are great, too. Yeah. <laughs> Everything, all the things. <laughs> and um, what's interesting is those of you may remember, only Office used to be uh, Team Lab Office, which actually has been around for a while. So it, it, it did change its name. So I knew about Team that Lab. probably and explains I, that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so they changed their name in 2014. So it, it's been around a while. <laughs> Yeah, I really had awesome. I genuinely had no idea. It's like <laughs> only Office. What? It's like, oh, yeah. it's Latvian. It's uh, AGPL V3. Yeah. Okay, that's free software. Oh, they have a deb download install. Ooh, it works. Yeah. Shiny. Yeah. <laughs> More <laughs> options are better, man. This is uh, yeah. <laughs> do you use any um client side only office applications? Because I, I freely admit Google Docs life is my Mm-hmm. I, I I do uh, the the yeah. uh, performance graphs that you see on the uh, the posts uh, the very few posts I've made on LinuxGameCast.com were made with LibreOffice. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I'm it, still that's using it. It's LibreOffice Libre Calc. That's the only one. <laughs> In fact, I I usually back up my uh, Google Docs um, show notes into uh, LibreOffice just as a backup. <laughs> good, good, good. Hey. Speaking of dev packages, updated freeze policy <laughs> for Bullseye. <laughs> yeah, Bullseye, Debian, yeah. new hotness since <laughs> Debian. So, you know, air quotes around new, but they do have some freeze dates. Um, starting with, uh, let's see, soft freeze is going to be 2.12.21, and the hard freeze is going to be 3.12.21, and the full freeze is to be announced. Which I can assume will take place somewhere between, well, uh, you know, first quarter 2037, roughly. 
Ish. Yeah. So we'll get the, you know, Debian 11, the new hotness coming. I'm running Debian 10 on everything. And mm-hmm. I, I, I get a little snippy with um, someone in the OBS Discord because, and it was one of the uh, moder- moderators, like, you need, and they were telling somebody, you need to upgrade. Debian 10 is ancient, doesn't run anything. It's like, Good, okay, go go ahead and explain to me exactly one thing OBS does that doesn't work on OBS uh, with Debian. Like, uh, uh, it's like, I run it genuinely on everything in the studio. So I'm not saying it's the best thing for desktop, but for like a production right now, system? Right now, it's, it's more up to date. I learned this the yeah. hard way. Uh, Debian 10 is more up to date than Ubuntu 1804. 1804, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. So... so wrap mm. your head around that <laughs> yeah <laughs> i think it's good it's good news um i'll be sticking with tin until that happens then cautiously uh like trying one box at a time yeah <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. very slowly but open source less pass what do you use for yeah. a password man- manager um outside of google hi google <laughs> I have Google and uh, Firefox. They basically mirror each other. They uh, mm-hmm. get their uh, passwords off each other. That is worth doing, and, um, whether you're on one service mm-hmm. or the other, because that's one of the reasons I set up a Firefox sync yep. for that password yeah. functionality. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, I used to use uh, KeyPass, but I honestly, that database is probably so out of date that none of the passwords are current anymore, but... Mm. I did use that for a while, but this, this is a completely stateless password manager. You don't have Mm -hmm. like a big database with all of your passwords. You have, oh, it's the horse. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, It's the, uh, no, it's the, uh, instead of having like the big uh, database, you have a little algorithm that uh, calculates um, what, yeah, what password you're looking for by you putting in the site, uh, your login name, and your master password. That's still the only password you need. And it'll calculate the um, password for that specific website that you're looking for. Which, in my head, it's like, okay, if this ever gets broken, um, they're going to be able to calculate everyone's uh, passwords from one of the results, uh, their master passwords from one of the results, so that may be a Mm. problem. Mm. But hopefully that won't happen. Yeah. Hopefully, mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, yeah no, it, it's <laughs> interesting. It, it's a different way to go at it, but yeah. <laughs> but are yeah. you saying you you might have trust issues with this? Yes, oh. <laughs> I do. <laughs> you don't even need to run it from their website, uh, and the yeah, it's open source, so it's you can go look at their source code anytime, but. Mm-hmm. It's kind I of can. a good idea. Oh, I, I love it. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Use it with something else. Yeah, okay. Please. No, no. I understand where you're coming from. When that, we're like, that's neat. I just don't want to. You, you, as a, to put a lot of faith in because you got to realize in 2020, you are not in the minority if you have a gang of passwords to a ton of sites that you just don't know. They're not even something <laughs> yeah. that you could memorize because. You know, like 32 characters or something crazy, alphanumeric, special characters, upper lowercase. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, trusting it was something like that. Mm, I don't know. But, hey, look into it. It'll be in the show notes. Jill, you got some thoughts on it. Yeah. So I really think this is uh, brilliant. And for me, this is actually something I will use. Because the reason I haven't used KeyPass or LastPass in a long time is, well, I can never remember the passwords, of course. <laughs> and... The need to sync devices can be a pain. (laughs) And uh, I just, I I like that you can go to their website or for greater security, you can use a Firefox or Chrome extension or their Android app. And my favorite is they have a command line interface that works quite well. (laughs) So I was really happy about that. That's like, okay, having having that option, I was sold. Right on, right on. Plenty of good options, except for Google yeah. Authenticator, because you can't mm. move that from one device to the other. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Google, what are you doing? That, yeah, I mean, you would have had me, Googs. You would have yeah. sold me another product, but it's like, oh, no, I, I genuinely was keeping like this 
archaic ancient device around because I didn't want to move everything off of it. Yeah. So yeah, I finally moved mm-hmm. to a different system. Um, okay, check this out. Up next, mm-hmm. we got a new thing. Yay. In my interfacing Linux series where I am showing you how to save a couple hundred bucks on your next audio interface for doing audio stuff on the internet with audio. Yeah. This is the PreSonus Fire Studio. I walk through, you know, an overview, a setup, sound check, round trip latency test. I put it through our studio session for 15 minutes to see if I can get it to explode. This one didn't. Um, mm. Then, you know, these are all bar charts and stuff like that. Then we got this fancy new thing that I've thrown in, uh, which is just ah. a rating scale, one to five, whether or not you should consider picking this up. You know, think about it. You can get eight in, eight out, um, 16 channels of eight at all that fun stuff for about a hundred bucks. What, what can you get with a, like, you can get like a focus, right? I two I maybe for a hundred bucks. So up to you mix and match. I uh, do have a new one out on Patreon for patrons. This is more of a cautionary tale. I have one about the Digimax 003 R because I wanted to see what a $1,200 interface sounded like. So go check that out. That'll be available for public uh, next week. But we do have that new review system in place that I'm sure Pedro is dying to take advantage of. (laughs) I did see it. I thought it was neat. It's like, okay, no, I need to find an excuse to use it. (laughs) We can start reviewing all types of things, man, and be like, hmm, this chocolate chip cookie. Three out of five. <laughs> Pros, cons. I think report of the week might have uh, something to say if all of a sudden everyone starts doing food reviews. Mm. Linux, <laughs> how can we tie Linux into it? I don't know. Just do it. <laughs> but that is available there. Um, this is a handy application. Mm-hmm. It is. And uh, let's say you know someone who is nonverbal. It's not that they don't understand you, it's just that they'd rather not communicate using words, be it for any psychological reason or personal preference. Maybe they just prefer other means of communication. It's valid, it's fine at this point, yeah. (laughs) So, free speech, it's this little uh, bit of software, it's, um, it was created as a way to basically introduce this kind of functionality to the operating system that doesn't involve paying two or three hundred bucks per license Mm -hmm. for the software that already exists that does something similar so um the creator says that uh uh, his sibling is uh very much um non-verbal so since a lot of people uh were able to um well uh Make a wish actually um, gave uh, his sibling one of their wishes. So kudos, yeah, major kudos. That's awesome. And uh, a lot of a lot of people actually came back after they heard of that. It's like, oh, uh, so you have this project? Can we uh, can we donate to it? And now he did set up a couple of uh, coffees, kofis, however you want to say it. And uh, it's yeah, no, it's available. It's uh, it. It's interesting because getting an OS to convey information without words is pretty challenging, all things considered. Yeah, it's and basically something. a word flow graph, which, you know, when you talk about accessibility applications, yeah. it's mm-hmm. or not, they're, they're radically expensive and because yes. they're such a very narrow, and, you know, we have things like Orca, Orca screen reader and stuff like that on Linux, mm-hmm. but this is something that you know goes well beyond that and yeah you know, if you know somebody in need of that or somebody's looking for some software yeah. like that or is currently you know thinking about buying that take this for a test drive because you know i love it when we can see open source solutions applied to things you know very closed market yes mm-hmm. definitely you know, yeah, that's definitely. Jill? yeah so um you know as a as a teacher this this really affects me because I'm I'm having to teach students that need uh, to use software that's proprietary and very expensive, and they usually can't afford it. So I try and give them other options out there, and it's just it's nice to have to have an open source option for the nonverbal. And because um, I've had some of those students before, and it this is this is great because you know they get they get gouged. 
They get gouged with proprietary yeah. software. <laughs> it's an issue. <laughs> that, um, usually what happens when stuff like that is taken care of by insurance companies. So, yeah, mm -hmm. they, they yeah. just ratchet it up as much as they can. Because, like, well, the end user is mm -hmm. not really paying for it. So, yeah, yeah, that's quite unfortunate. But, hey, man, that's a good solution. Makes me happy to see that. It's kind of brilliant. Yep. Jill, we got some people we need to think because they were like, hey, yeah. man, we like what you do and we'd like you to keep doing it. But you know what? Here's a bonus soda. Somebody gave yeah. you a little bonus, didn't they? Oh, Aldius, thank you so much. He gifted me Ark Survival Evolved, which I'm looking forward to playing with my time off <laughs> from work. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much, Aldius. He has uh, given us games, uh, gifted us all games before. And that's just so wonderful. <laughs> thank mm, you. That's kind of brilliant. <laughs> I, I got a new thing I got to put up on the wall, though, because I, I got to write a new. Oh, look, I can almost block it out. Nope. Yeah. Nope. Hang on. Let me, <laughs> let me do this. Watch. Boop. Ta-da. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> it can finally be seen. I got Solder Chen. Yay! Yeah. And, uh, I'm not weaving up, but it legitimately says Chen on the box. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is the uh, Yu Chan. It, it's a little digital, you know, this is not for like big projects, but this is exactly what I was thinking about. Well, something up here, because so, I'm going to, I've just made up my mind, like mentally, I, I was like, I really need that scroll wheel and some other things that I bought. Uh, Mr. Mackey for to see if I get it working. So I'm going to finish um, restoring that uh, archaic piece of kit. And this, this lets me do it just regular in the house without dragging everything out to the garage. And um, that's kind of brilliant. And the person we, who's responsible uh, for this, I saw, yeah. uh, what's his name? Louis Rosman was playing with one of these. And he's like, this is going to be junk because they're not terribly expensive. And it's like, no, these are really good. I'm like, oh, okay. Oh, all right. <laughs> and Very of course, good. it was a soldering iron. So naturally, Linux Nero was like, here. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you have that on your wish list, do you? Not anymore. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to play with it. And um, that is going to be used to uh, make Mr. Mackey whole again. Okay. Yeah, okay. awesome. It is brilliant. I <laughs> uh, do want to thank each and every mm -hmm. single one of you um, who are making this show possible um, over at patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. Your name, as always, in all of our credits as a way to say thanks. Plus, uh, get access to our Discord. Get an extra hour of our content a week with the pre pre super shows, and which also goes live an hour before uh, Linux Gamecast Weekly. If you want to pop in, say hi. We do always have IRC free, completely open, and it's tied in with Discord so mm -hmm. we can chat back and forth. And uh, we get an early crack at uh, some of the stuff that we're working on. Kind of, you know, it's like, hey, take a look at it before it goes out to the masses. Make sure we cross our T's and dot our lowercase J's. That's brilliant. <laughs> as mentioned, uh, linkscamecast.com, we got like little wish zones and stuff like that. We got LibrePay, uh, mm -hmm. PayPal, and all the other fun stuff. It is brilliant. Thank you. You are responsible for this show because it was a Patreon goal. And yeah. uh, you let us keep doing mm -hmm. it. That's fun. And I want to keep doing it. It's kind of brilliant. Awesome. Cool. But <laughs> let's do this. Stickified slice of pie. Ooh. <laughs> Wait a second. That's not an ARM CPU. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <Shh>. <laughs> Be quiet. No, man. Dude. All right. Raspberry Pi sized. R1000. Yeah. Ryzen. USB 3.1, <laughs> Type C, two micro HDMI. I want one that's going to be x86 yes. in the size of Pi, and it's probably going to cost more than 200 bucks, even if they make them publicly available. Um, yeah. Dude, <laughs> it's, a, it's a 12 watt R1000. So you'll be looking at like the dual core or. The uh, what is the TDP 3.5 gigahertz of the 1606, 3.3 of a 1505? Man, see, I'm just thinking about all the stuff I can get into with this because what I really want to make is like a miniature jack box, the audio box back here that's uh, mm -hmm. I'm doing all of our audio processing. It's like, hmm, do they make because it's it's got a micro uh well mini PCIe port on it too. And it's like, oh okay. 
do they make a fire? Mm-hmm. Of course. Oh yeah. One company does speaking of only <laughs> one company making something I'm like, yeah, it's going to be a hundred bucks. Let's see if I can adapt something, maybe 3d print the case to hold a full size card. And, oh, oh, so many cool things to do with that. Are you excited about it? Maybe. Yes. Well, I'm oh, only excited I... about it. If it's like, <laughs> it's, it's like 150 or less. Uh, ah. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> well, I think if it hits that sweet spot around two hundred dollars, it could be an inexpensive desktop replacement, or even better, a great option for a Beowulf cluster. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, if they can do the two hundred dollar um thing like that, like a desktop replacement, those are called Chromebooks. But yes, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yes, <laughs> but no, the fact that it is uh, an x eighty six and it's pie sized. We've had those before, mostly from mm-hmm. Intel, uh, not so much from AMD, but it's, yeah, no, with 8 gigs around, when you posted this on Discord, it's like, ooh, that's neat. Oh, is it going to be less than 200? Not with 8 gigs around, it's not. Mm-mm. I don't know, that's even <laughs> if we can get a hold of something like this, because this might be one of those only available in quantities of 1,000. Oh, yeah. No. yeah. Ah, they'll, they'll show up on eBay. <laughs> oh, they will. Um... Just something to keep your eye out for. But yeah. uh, what do we got? Oh, man. Um, it's not l- the first uh, bit of uh, digital signage that we've had I'm trying based to, on the uh, Raspberry mm-hmm. Pi. Is it Linutop? Linutop. Or Linutop. Whatever. Yeah, it's it can run a Raspberry Pi. They also have an x86 variant. And it is, it comes packaged, uh, the teeny tiny little Raspberry Pi sized case is of course a Raspberry Pi. There's a slightly bigger one that's the x86, that's more like your nooks. But it's um, the Pi version, the full kit oh, comes... look at that, uh, it's got a nice little uh, start a home fire starter kit. And- yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it starts out at 79 euros, so in and around 100 bucks. And the big one, uh, it starts at 196 euros, so like 230, 240 dollars. Mm. And it's um, it's all in one. It comes with the OS, uh, all uh, basically the there's a name of the OS in there. I guess it's just called uh, Linux Top OS. Linux Top. <laughs> yes, yeah. it is based on uh, Shubuntu. Uh, or uh, for the x86 version, or uh, Raspbian for the Raspberry Pi. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, yeah, no, it, it is a all-in-one solution that you can buy to set up a digital signage server running off of a Pi, for example. Mm. It, you pay that much, and you plug it in, and you just start loading your stuff. Uh, it creates a little server with a CMS that you can just drop whatever pictures you want on the digital signage and away you go. And that is what you're paying the premium for. Yeah. Because I know everybody listening to this is like, I could make that for 10 bucks. You you could, but you couldn't give it to grandpa and be like, yeah, here for your new little (laughs) storefront. Just do this. You can figure it out. Well, another, you know, a really good alternative in this space as far as software goes is the Zeebo player, open source digital signage player. Um, I've used this before, and um, but you, of course you need to to have the the time to set it up on a device and and the hardware, but whether it be a Raspberry Pi or other other SOC. Um, so if you don't have the time, buy a Linux top. This is just easy, <laughs> very yeah, easy. It's th- all that's in the one. thing. It's like <laughs> oh, I'll buy one of them and run like the screens that I have above my counter on my store. It's like there, yeah. done. <laughs> or get get painfully creative with it um <laughs> there's a new raspberry pi imager though yeah so this is a, this is awesome this new raspberry pi imager program for is for imaging your micro sd card for the raspberry pi and it's supposed to make it a lot easier and faster to install a distro whether it be raspbian or an ubuntu image on a raspberry pi and it definitely is the ui is very simple to use and it's a lot like using etcher <laughs> so you just uh you know lo- load up what, what they use <laughs> 
Yeah. Or th they recommended that people use? Yeah, they, they recommended. But this is specifically, this actually um, uh, takes the Raspberry Pi images from their server and, and directly images it on an, onto the SD card, which is much faster than you normally do it, of course, where you copy the ISO to the hard drive and then image it. So this uh, bypasses that step, which is Wait, really Wait, so nice. they made it where you need a persistent <laughs> internet connection in order to do it? Yes. <laughs> but you don't have to. You could still download one. <laughs> Looking at the thing, it looks like you download it first, then it images it. Mm. I was just looking mm. at the video. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. So um, when I played with it with uh, Raspbian, it just automatically um, copied it to the, the, you just, you picked it and it automatically downloaded it and imaged it. Let's see. We'll put it in an SD mm -hmm. card and <laughs> choose an operating system. Choose the SD card. Come on. Mm -hmm. Write and verify card. No. And it downloads. Ah, uh, yeah. man, I think they've, but, they've, they've, and uh, then it images it. <laughs> play button this um, Steam Play. Man, you just click a button. You stick a card in, <laughs> click a button, and All right. yeah, done. It's, it's Etcher. It's it's like Etcher. So <laughs> one of the things you can put on it is this new hotness from the fine fun carbon based entities at Canonical. Yes, Ubuntu server on a Pi two, three, or four. Running Ubuntu server on your Raspberry Pi is easy. Just pick up the OS image you want, flash it to a micro SD card, not a mini. Not an, would be more than a mini, slightly less mini SD card. Yes. <laughs> Loaded to your buy and away you go. This, uh, they have images for, yeah, 32 bit and uh, 64 bit images for the Pi 2, the Pi 3, and the Pi 4. We have 1804.4 and 1910. That's pretty cool. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know. What would you put That's on your Pi? <laughs> Well, a Benchy uh, server is a good option. <laughs> Raspbian? Just because mm -hmm. I don't have to worry about it, and I can just, I know that it's going to work. I can just start doing things. Um, Ubuntu I, Mate. <laughs> see, the only time I put anything on my Pi and put the SD card in there and run it is like if I'm angry at a particular uh, SD card and I want it to die. <laughs> I, I yeah, it's like an iron lady for me, man. I'm like, you know what? I've had enough of you. Here, <laughs> I'm a well-adjusted human being. Um, <laughs> okay, maybe you do not like torturing SD cards, but maybe you do, and you want to tell us about it. You can always send us a note. How can they do that, Pedro? You can do that very easily. You can do that by flinging the remainders of said uh, SD card at our faces, or you can go to escapecast.com, you hit the contact button, and you fill out the form. Make sure LWDW is the show that you're sending your bit of feedback to, otherwise we may have some hate mail for that uh, Saturday foul-mouthed show, uh, What We Do. So, it, uh, yeah, no, that's actually the best way, because guaranteed that someone's going to see that, YouTube comments are a possibility. Patreons, of course, they have priority. If no, you I leave us a randomly comment on... at replied you. Somewhere. <laughs> I didn't even at reply you. I just wrote your name somewhere. And oh yeah, yeah. no, uh, that might be difficult. <laughs> okay. But yeah, no. Mm -hmm. If you're a Patreon, of course, you can leave us a comment on Patreon, and uh, if it is a, a feedback worthy comment, it will show up right here, right now. <laughs> And, Definitely uh, I guess... use the email contact form. Yes. yes. <laughs> YouTube comments, man, you, you're rolling the dice on that. I'm just, I'm just going to be honest with you. You're rolling the dice on that. That might make it, that might not. So just don't bank on that. But you can also use Twitter. You can. Because you and, might uh, remember I guess, last uh, week. Dementor. Uh, yeah, man. Yes. <laughs> Jellyfish. I had a bunch of people throw back. Because it's like, yo, man, I went to the web zone. And we were talking about it. And I was like, uh, don't see an Android app. To which everyone here on this show was like, yeah, I don't see an Android app either. Because it wasn't. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> then Jellyfin. <laughs> they're like, yo, sorry about it. What was Jellyfin, Pedro? Let everyone keep, get everyone back up to speed. On uh, that. Jellyfin was the uh, Plex sort of style media server thing mm -hmm. that we yeah. talked about last week. And uh, yeah, the you brought up it's like, oh. Where are them Android apps? Because mm -hmm. that's like the one advantage that Plex still has. And you know Well, what? apparently they were there. <laughs> well, 
No, they weren't. Uh, the client <laughs> downloads were not on the page because of yeah, a design change the to the back end. They're going to get it sorted. You know, ah, we, all right. we do have the apps. <laughs> that is a thing to which it's like my because, hey, man, that that's like definitely one of my barriers to entry when I go to the download page and I, I'm not searching external sites, you know, for mm -hmm. to whether or not you have apps and I'm not picking on Jellyfin. This is across the board. I would expect the same thing if I had something I'm like, well, I totally had this thing on GitHub. Why didn't you Google search? I'm like, really? I wouldn't ask that of anyone. <laughs> so that's going to get, oh, let's see if it fix. Oh, uh, Docker. <laughs> Generic Mac went Aww. portable. Wait, dot net maybe not there yet. Not no, there yet. not, not yet. <laughs> I guess you're working. You can on. find them. Uh, you can find them on the Play Store. Mm. If you go to the Play Store, it's there. Yeah, they are there. Search for it. One thing I yeah. do like to see. Here's here's an easy case for it. I'm glad that you uh, lot are going to be adding it back. Is to make sure because if I search for it on the Play Store, there is a larger than zero chance that I might download the wrong thing from a bad actor mm -hmm. versus it being linked directly from the website, taking me directly to the correct thing that I should be getting in the first place. Mm, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. No, the, much like you, I went to their downloads, but it's like, yeah, no, there's no Android. Hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Uh, that is gonna do it we're gonna roll the credits and get out of here but uh we will see you next week we gotta bring up some music <clears throat> there it comes that signals the end times for this podcast <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> yay <laughs> oh we love our all our Executive producers and producers, but our new advisor, Haplo. Yay! Haplo gets to advise us. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Basically, if anything wrong happens, blame Haplo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Haplo. And me and Steve husband just sent him a big package full of lots of goodies from Scale. <laughs> and uh, it was our... Nice. Um, our thank you for, for being our advisor. <laughs> Yeah. Yay. We survived Rack. another one. Yes. We're about 100 out from Pi. 3.14. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's pull that down. Now I need to do the cut in for okay. the interview. <laughs> Just real quick. That's going, that's going. But before we do that, we're going to hear from who was it, Jill? Uh... Yeah. So this is our, our first scale 18x interview. This is with Gorg Link, PhD and Director of Sales at Baturgia. And we're also going to be hearing from Anna Jimenez, a specialist at a marketing specialist at Baturgia. This is an, a really neat company. All right. <laughs> Let's take a look. <laughs> Okay. All right. I should be able to. Okay. Well, uh, Sorry about that, Ben. <laughs> no, no, no. We're fine. That's how I wanted to cut it in. Okay. So we didn't try to work. It's easier for me just to chop the end off. At the end, yeah. Than it is to try to slice the middle and smash yeah. everything back together. Makes sense. Which means. All right. Uh... Yeah, flat packs work pretty well. As hard as Canonical mm -hmm. is trying to push snaps, uh, flat packs on uh, KD Neon work very, very well. <laughs> mm -hmm. I just go to Flat Hub or wherever, hit the install button, and Firefox gives me, Would you like to open this with Discover? It's like. Yeah, might as well use this cover for something. Yeah, go on and install that. <laughs> I don't know, man. I mean... Mm -hmm. 
I don't have any use for flat packs, snaps. Like app image, the app image, maybe if I just want to try something real quick. But outside of that, mm -hmm. this, I mean, currently, even right now, even what, two years later after we've seen everyone like, hey, this is our solution, to which I'll go, to what problem? <laughs> yes. I'm still waiting on that problem to show up that you're solving. <laughs> no, uh, I do like the irony. It's like, uh, they... Oh, they're universal uh, packaging systems. Uh, you'll be able to use them in whatever distribution, regardless of whatever package manager they use to build it. It's like, and now there are double the competing standards because instead of DEBs and RPMs, mm -hmm. now you have snaps and flat packs as well. That's great. That's amazing. Yeah, it's so <laughs> nice to have all those op uh, options. Like and Linux office. Nero, that we was will, awesome. I'll get you like the whole name writing thing. We're going to do that Saturday. If everyone wants to know, Linux Aww. Nero. No clue what you'll use this for. Damn it, I've already told you. Um, If it has anything to do with unicorns or Pedro, I want pics. From Linux Nero. <laughs> Slim pickings for you, I'm afraid there, John. <laughs> That's Aww. cool. Hopefully, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll even have a... um. Not a review of it, but I'll tell you whether or not it does the job. It should. Solder Chan. <laughs> well, the flat pad works. Yeah, I. It's just like an extra step because I I was thinking about installing something with a flat pack the other day, and there was the oh, make sure you have this repo enabled with flat. And I was like, no, all right, I just build it. <laughs> I can get clone a lot quicker than I can take whatever steps <laughs> necessary for the because I know as soon as I'm done with that, I'm removing flat pack from the system. I don't want it sitting there. Because I don't need a extra security vector in the box. I still have them installed. I have uh Athenaeum, which is like the uh free software game client thingy mm -hmm. that has all of the free and open source game clients and that 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 works really well in fact the last few um open mw streams i did i was running from open mw mm. in from athenaeum which is just as up to date as the current stable version so yeah. <laughs> Let's see, I don't want to shoot myself. Um, have you ever had like one of those gas powered monitor thingies? We have those at work. Okay. Uh. <laughs> mm -hmm. Those are the uh, the monitor arms that the first round that they put in, mm -hmm. they put in the wrong ones that only support mm -hmm. up to like five kilos. And with two 1080p uh. 23 inch monitors per desk, five kilos is not enough. So they had to yeah. go back and put in the 10 kilo <laughs> ones. It's like, oh, there you go. <laughs> well, I was <laughs> digging around, like, looking for... It's for in here. Um, one that would hold. Initially, I was like... But I found a desk that was big enough to where I didn't have to get a second one. But uh, this 32-inch, but also this 27-inch uh, show note monitor. Which, you know, it's tall. So yeah. we'll get something that'll hold it. We'll give everybody a pro tip. If the best reviews I could find for the cheapest product was for one on Amazon, which was, uh, do I have our little list loaded? Yeah. This guy. Ah. Uh. 54.99. Oh. 17.6 pounds. Yeah. Hang on. <laughs> let me, let me confirm that these are, Pedro, you like these, don't you? Not a big fan of the red color scheme, but I don't mind those. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> They're ugly. Um, <laughs> here, here's my pro tip. If you're looking for one of these, and this will hold a 17 to 32, up to 17 pounds, mm -hmm. they got a store on eBay, motherfucker, for 37 bucks. 
Oh, nice. Now, here, here's the catch. They've updated the joint. So, that's the old swivel ah. joint. There's the new one. Okay. So, this one apparently was susceptible to monitors tilting down after time. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. The so, monitor sag. Yeah, mm -hmm. we have a lot of that at work. So, yeah, these have I, that old joint. So, there's, there's your fair warning, but... 30 for seven bucks. I was like, I'm just gonna get one, find out, see if it works. Okay, Let's see if it works. We have those at school and they're horrible. They they didn't set them up right and they're not tightened correctly. And I just, oh no, like uh, see, uh, <laughs> they claimed they had set them up correctly and we tightened them because people were complaining, oh, our monitors keep dropping, oh, our monitors keep sagging. It's like, well, yeah, all right. So we took the Allen screwdrivers and tightened them as hard as we could to the point where some of them broke because we tightened them to the uh. point where they collapsed <laughs> oh oh my gosh wait were those like spring loaded ones then no they were gas shock yeah huh. there was a little gas strut <laughs> interesting wow yeah because of the ones we have there i'm like the if i ever Need to get one of those. I'll I'll just get one with a classic arm like the <laughs> my arm. Move it yourself. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, both of these monitors have face amounts. Uh, the AOC one actually has like the indented face amount, so it is mm. compatible with most of the like arm adapters. Yeah, you don't need to get the weird adapter thingies. Yeah. Well, this is going to be to free up because what's going to happen is free up your desk. Well, we're going to be adding a lot more desk. I found a table that's man trying to find a something that is exactly twenty nine point two inches. I went and got my freedom tape and I, I measured shit <laughs> <laughs> like two or three times. It's like I couldn't. I could find something that was exactly that, but it wouldn't be the right depth. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, or they would be like way too long. So I got one that I might have to file the legs down just a little bit, but it's not going to bug me. This is not for looks. But I want to be able to put this. This is moving back. Jackbox is moving over here. Frank's going to hover a little bit. We got to work that out. I'll talk to Frank like next Tuesday when he's done with hot yoga. He's easier to deal with. Um, but we'll have tables, so I'll be able to have this monitor over here, so I'm not trying to juggle this now. Oh, Mr. that's nice. Mackie yeah. here at where I can do all my marking and jogging. They don't have desk to actually put it on. Yeah. That'll be yeah. interesting. I like yeah. that much, yeah. but that's very valuable. Yeah, Vin, I have the same stands that you had have for your monitors um, that you got on, on the list. I used for my two 30-inch ones on the side. And those have worked really well, yeah. but they're just on the desk. So, yeah, these uh, that's one of the reasons I, I, that's, I ordered one of those because that clamps on, so it's like more desk. Yeah, that's one yeah, of the it really um, helps you a lot. Yeah, those are Vivos, according man, to the I UK government, Jelly Bean. Yeah, that's the all you need. Just keep Vivo. washing hands. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah, my brother knows about that, though. He used to be an EMT and do all that stuff. Yep. He learned to... Uh, he says... I had... Yeah. The only arm mm -hmm. I ever had was um, a pole, mm -hmm. metal pole, that held one of the uh, Asus 1080p monitors. And it held. It held surprisingly well. <laughs> the I use a Vivo for holding these two. Good kid. Mm -hmm. Vivo, you think it's going to be straight up Chinesium, which it is, but I mean, it's thick. It's, it's you, it, Yeah, they're well built. You can jack somebody up. And I have another Vivo holding the Shonut monitor, which is, you know, just a smaller version of this. And I have an industrial one made for like signage kiosk. <laughs> yeah. Like it's big. I mean, it's massive holding <laughs> the uh, 43 inch monitor. But, you know, because. You just can't put the thing on the desk because it's way up here. Yeah. So it's able to be. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, oh, 
I, I love everyone like, um, don't touch your face. Like, there's no conclusive evidence that that contributes to anything. It's like, yeah, if you're going to shove your dirty fingers into your high holes or your mouth or your nose, sure. Touching the rest of your face? <laughs> I don't know, do you have but, leprosy? Yeah. <laughs> you have open wounds just, everywhere? <laughs> then try harder. Just don't. Yeah. <laughs> don't rub your eyes and rub your nose. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, seriously, just keep your fingers out of your orifices. That's it. Yeah. Done. <laughs> <laughs> That's just good advice to go about life, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Live a little. <laughs> I don't know. What's this thing like rocking? Uh, I don't think it's. Yeah. Just whatever. I mean, go, go overboard with it. For my amusement, I love seeing the people out with their masks and gloves on. <laughs> I haven't seen anyone with a mask yet. <laughs> I, I, man, I saw people with masks. Oh, uh, yeah, they're all over the place here. <laughs> and they just, they have on like the regular, like, you know, the new, what you would consider a mask, which does nothing to protect you. Yeah. Not medical masks, yeah. Let's see if they don't have a respirator built into them. Or it would filter anything out. <laughs> those are surgical it's masks. Just, or like, uh, all, yeah, all those do is stop you from spitting on someone yeah. while you're talking. Yeah. Or if you sneeze or you cough or anything. <laughs> That's cool. But if it makes people feel better, man, give them a little placebo. And they're like, I am safe. Yay, I can travel. And the outdoors it reminds me of the <laughs> South Park episode when they were, you know, the weather episode. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that was a movie genre for a minute. And you're like, oh, the cold, which I watched one that was about the cold, effectively. Uh, 2012? Or something like that, man. It's like yeah. Everything got really cold. Ooh. Wait, that's our the plot? The Jake Hole one? <laughs> Possibly. Yeah. I don't know. As long as we don't run out of tea, I'll be fine. That's actually something I need to buy. Mm. I can running out of tea supply. and running out of toilet paper. Mm. Thanks, humanity. Yeah. You huge manatees. <laughs> <laughs> Hoarding. <laughs> Hoarding manatees. It could have been the day before tomorrow. I Man, there, there it was for an entire summer, and I think into the winter we had like disaster movies. <laughs> Oh, yeah! 2012 was a completely different movie. <laughs> yeah, it was the day after tomorrow. Yes, yeah, so that's the one. <laughs> the Jake Gyllenhaal one. next Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah, I don't... <laughs> oh, dude. Okay, here's something that's a little off. Um, so, cats. <laughs> yeah, right? See, he, but he has on a respirator. That's good. Good on him. <laughs> Doesn't protect his nose. Um, no. <laughs> I think the respirator is upside down, but... Yeah. <laughs> so there's a thing with the cat musical that I'm almost to the point now where I'm curious. To just see how bad it is. Because I love a good train wreck. Apparently, because this was the... like They had released it into theaters and there was a last minute push out to like edit the hands and some of the clipping on this CGI that they did. There was. Go look at them. I'm making this up. Which makes this next part much attention. <laughs> even more entertaining that apparently there's a butthole cut. Because, like, apparently right before it went out, all, all of the characters um, had sphincters. Visible ones. <laughs> They are cats, so yeah. Yeah. And so there's a petition, <laughs> as the internet does. Reinstate like, the butthole. Yeah, re-release, re we want that cut, man. Oh. <laughs> not making this up. <laughs> oh, oh, man, that's not fair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, they cut all the butts, the buttholes out. <laughs> I 
mean... <laughs> I know this is a thing because I posted a link to it. Um... Humanity. Ask your dirt. <laughs> I'm finding a lot of petitions to make it illegal to eat dog or a cat, <laughs> but. <laughs> Ah, there it is. <laughs> it says there's been an update. Uh, oh. To finish the 400 effects, uh, finding this cut is my way. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the update? Please don't tell me it's not real. There is no butthole edition. Uh. <laughs> At least not an intentional one. Many shots resemble a butthole, so they needed to be edited out. <laughs> you know, that 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 still counts. Yeah, do a Wolverine. Release um release a cut of the movie without any of the special effects. Uh well, only some of the special effects, none of the post processing. Done on the things. <laughs> and the leaked version of the wolf. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> I did. Yeah. It was on um It's not Daily Motion. What's the other one? YouTube? Vimeo. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was on Vimeo for a while. <laughs> Early watched the highest quality piracy. <laughs> Man, kudos to Vim. I mean, Vimeo for sticking around. Like that's always yeah. been like, oh yeah, that's a thing for a long time. Yeah. Oh, that's where a lot of the artists and creators were years before, you know, YouTube. So. Oh yeah, hipsters have been using it for a long time. <laughs> the schools use it. <laughs> It's a good way to. Biggest issue with that is if you use it to any usable amount, uh, get out the checkbook. Oh, I know. Yeah, that's a problem. <laughs> so, I mean, it's a good resource if you hate money. Um, <laughs> free games on GOG. Yep. Well, those are always good for, like, the open source clients to get the data. Um, Vimo's got a lot of things um, for, like, uh, access accounts and stuff like that, though. So, I mean, if you're working on something and you don't want people to get a hold to it, but you want to, like, have better tools than just an email address, you can create. I mean, that, that's really what it's built for, man. It makes perfect sense. I mean, it's a good service. I'm not knocking on it. <laughs> I mean, there's PeerTube if you want to be, like, um... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> If you want to find all of the pirated movies, yes, there's PeerTube. <laughs> that and French content. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's the thing. And a lot of adult, adult content, too. That didn't take much scrolling to find. Oh, probably not. <laughs> Tis the internet. It's like, oh yeah, PeerTube, let's go check this out. And there it is. Okay. <laughs> I'm out. Mm -mm -mm. So we got anything else going on? I got to get this cut together, put together. Then I got to start drilling holes in walls. Oh, okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, you got a lot of work <laughs> ahead of you. Well, that's not going to be too bad. I'm trying to make up my mind because I have like a two meter walk-in closet that goes across this side. That I'm thinking about just pulling that entire wall down. Oh. 
I gotta go find my blueprints. I don't know. I don't think anything in there's load bearing. And I've had this house this long without walking in it with a sledgehammer, so. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be something cathartic about that. But that'll definitely be for another day. I can sacrifice this one room. It's for the good of the house, trust me. Better than trying to spread this crap over three different rooms. Yeah. Plus, I would like to be able to sell this place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was kind of the point. And the housing market went... Alright. Uh, that's going to do it. Okay. Tune in tomorrow to watch Jordan play a thing. Yeah. I don't know, man. Jordan's probably just went stir crazy. He's gone. He's gone native. He's turned into a <laughs> syrup. He's like Odo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's just like a ball of syrup and poutine. <laughs> no, I want some poutine. Damn you, Ben. <laughs> what? I like poutine. Poutine is nice. What else? <laughs> I ate yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> All right, everyone. <laughs> Bye. Bye, everyone. Love you guys. Thanks for coming live.